Hi, fourth grade. Here is the final two chapters of Number of the Stars. If you need to, this, this is probably gonna last about 10 minutes, this final read, so if you need to stop it, come back, you can do that. But here we go, chapter 16. I'll tell you just a little. Poor Blossom, Uncle Henrik said laughing after dinner that evening. It was bad enough that your mother was going to milk her after all these years of city life. But Anne-Marie, to do this for the very first time, I'm surprised Blossom didn't kick you. Mama laughed too. She sat in an uncomfortable chair that Uncle Henrik had moved in from the living room and placed in the corner of the kitchen. Her leg in a clean white cast to the knee was on the footstool. Anne-Marie didn't mind their laughing. It had been funny. When she had arrived back at the farmhouse, she had run along the road to avoid the soldiers who might still be in the woods. Now carrying nothing, she was in no danger. Mama and Kirsty were gone. There was a note, hastily written from Mama, that the doctor was taking her in his car to the local hospital and that they would be back soon. But the noise from Blossom, forgotten, unmilked, uncomfortable, and in the barn, had set Anne Marie warily out to the, with the milking bucket. She had done her best trying to ignore Blossom's irritated snorts and tossing head. Remember how Uncle Henrik's hands had worked with a firm rhythmic pulling motion and she had milked. I could have done it, Kirsty announced. You only have to pull and it squirts out. I could do it easily. Anne Marie rolled her eyes. I'd like to see you try, she thought. Is Ellen coming back, Kirsty asked, forgetting the cow after a moment. She had she said she has to make a, draw, a dress for my doll. Anne Marie and I will help you make a dress, Mama told her. Ellen had to go with her parents. Wasn't that a nice surprise that the Rosens came last night to get her? She should have woke me up to say goodbye, Kirsty grumbled, spooning some imaginary food into the painted mouth of the doll she had propped in a chair beside her. Anne Marie, Uncle Henrik said, getting up from the table and pushing back his chair. If you come with me now to the barn, I'll give you a milking lesson. Wash your hands first. Me too, said Kirsty. Not you too, Mama said. Not this time. I need your help here since I can't walk very well. You'll have to be my nurse. Kirsty hesitated, deciding whether to argue. Then she said, I'm going to be a nurse when I grow up, not a cow milker. So I have to stay here and take care of Mama. Followed as usual by the kitten, Anne Marie walked with Uncle Henrik to the barn through a fine misty rain that had begun to fall. It seemed to her that Blossom shook her head happily when she saw Henrik and knew that she would be in good hands again. She sat on the stacked hay and watched while he milked, but her mind was not on the milking. Uncle Henrik, she asked, where are the Rosens and the others? I thought you were taking them to Sweden on your boat, but they weren't there. They were there, he told her, leaning forward against the cow's broadside. You shouldn't know this. You remember that I told you it was safer not to know. But, he went on, and his hands moved with their sure practice motion. I will tell you just a little because you are so very brave. Brave, Anne-Marie asked, surprised. No, I wasn't. I was so frightened. You risked your life. But I didn't even think about that. I was only thinking and he interrupted her smiling. That's all brave means. Not thinking about the dangers, just thinking about what you must do. Of course you were frightened. I was too today, but you kept your mind on what you had to do and so did I. Now let me tell you about the Rosens. Many of the fishermen have built hidden places in their boat. I have too. Down underneath, I have only to lift the boards in the right place and there is room to hide a few people. Peter and the others and the resistance who work with him bring them to me and to the other fishermen as well. There are people who hide them and help them along the way to Gilly, Gilly G. Anne Marie was startled. Peter is in the resistance? Of course, I should have known. He brings mama and papa that secret newspaper, Der Free Dansk. He always asks them to be on the move and I should have figured it out to myself. He is a very, very brave young man, Uncle Henrik said. They all are. Anne Marie frowned, remembering the empty boat that morning. Where were the Rosens and the others there then? Underneath when I brought the basket? Uncle Henrik nodded. I heard nothing, Anne Marie said. Of course not. They had to be absolutely quiet for many hours. The baby was drugged so that it wouldn't cry. 
Could they hear me when I talk to you? Yes, your friend Ellen told me later that they heard you and that they heard the soldiers who came to search the boat. Anne Marie's eyes widened. Soldiers came, she said? I thought they went the other way after they stopped me. There are many soldiers in Gillagy and all along the coast. They are searching all the boats now. They know that the Jews are escaping, but they are not sure how, and they rarely find them. The hiding places are carefully concealed, and we often pile dead fish on the decks as well. They hate getting their shiny boots dirty. He turned his head toward her and grinned. Anne Marie remembered the shiny boots confronting her on the path. Uncle Henrik, she said, I'm sure you're right that I shouldn't know everything, but please, would you tell me about the handkerchief? I knew it was important, the packet. That's why I ran through the woods to take it to you, but I thought maybe it was a map. How could a handkerchief be important? He set the filled pail aside and began to wash the cow's udder with a damp cloth. Very few people know about this, Anne-Marie, he said with a serious look. But the soldiers were so angry about escaping Jews and the fact that they can't find them that they have just started using trained dogs. They had dogs, the ones who stopped me on the path. Uncle Henrik nodded. The dogs are trained to sniff about and find people where they're hidden. It happened just yesterday on two boats. Those dogs, they go right through the dead fish to the human scent. We were all very, very worried. We thought it meant the end of escape to Sweden by boat. It was Peter who took the problem to scientists and doctors. Some very fine minds have worked night and day trying to find a solution. And they have created a special drug. I don't know what it is, but it was in the handkerchief. It attracts the dogs, but when they sniff at it, it ruins their sense of smell. Imagine that. Anne-Marie remembered how the dogs had lunged at the handkerchief, smelt it, and then turned away. Now, thanks to Peter, we will have such a handkerchief on each boat, Captain. When the soldiers board our boat, we'll simply pull the handkerchief out of our pockets. The Germans will probably think we have bad colds. The dogs will sniff up the handkerchief and we are holding and then roam the boat and find nothing. They will smell nothing. Did they bring dogs on your boat this morning? Yes, not 20 minutes after you had gone. I was about to pull away from the dock when the soldiers appeared and ordered me to halt. They came aboard searching and found nothing. But then, of course, I had the handkerchief. If I had not, well, his voice trailed off, and he didn't finish the sentence. He didn't need to. If she had not found the packet where Mrs. Rose, Mr. Rosen had dropped it, if she had not run through the woods, and if the soldiers had taken the basket, if she had not reached the boat in time, all of the ifs whirled in Anne Marie's head now. They are safe in Sweden now, she asked. You're sure? Uncle Henrik stood, patted the cow's head. I saw them ashore. They were people waiting. There were people waiting to take them to shelter. They're quite safe there. But what if the Nazis invade Sweden? Will the Rosens have to run away again? That won't happen. For reasons of their own, the Nazis want Sweden to remain free. It is very complicated. Anne Marie's thoughts turned to her friend hiding under the deck of the Ingborg. It must have been awful for them, so many hours there she murmured. It was dark in the hiding place, dark and cold and very cramped, and Mrs. Rosen was seasick. Even though there was not, they were not on the water very long, it is a short distance, as you know, but they are courageous people, and none of that mattered when they stepped ashore. The air was fresh and cool in Sweden, and the wind was blowing. The baby was beginning to wake as I said goodbye to them. I wonder if I'll ever see Ellen again, Anne-Marie said sadly. You will, little one. You saved her life after all. Someday you will find her again. Someday the war will end, Uncle Henrik said. All wars do. Now then, he added, stretching. That was quite a milking lesson, wasn't it? Uncle Henrik and Marie shrieked and then began to laugh. Look, she pointed. The god of thunder has fallen into the milk pail. Final chapter 17. All this long time. The war would end, Uncle Henrik had said that, and it was true. The war ended almost two long years later. Anne-Marie was 12. Church bells rang all over Copenhagen early May evening. The Danish flag was raised everywhere. People stood in the streets and wept as they sang the national anthem of Denmark. Anne-Marie stood on the balcony of the apartment with her parents and her sisters and watched. Up and down the street and across the other side, she could see flags and banners in almost every window. 
She knew that many of those apartments were empty. For nearly two years now, neighbors had tended the plants and dusted the furniture and polished the candlesticks for the Jews who had fled. Her mother had done so for the Rosens. It is what friends do, Mama had said. Now neighbors had entered each unoccupied waiting apartment. Open windows hung symbols of freedom there. This evening, Mrs. Johansson's face was wet with tears. Kirsty waving a small flag saying her blue eyes were bright. Even Kirsty was growing up. No longer was she a little lighthearted chatterbox of a child. Now she was taller, more serious, and very thin. She looked like the pictures of Lise at seven in the old album. Peter Nielsen was dead. It was a painful fact to recall on this day that there was so much joy in Denmark. But Anne-Marie forced herself to think of her red-headed almost brother and how devastating the day was when they received the news that Peter had been captured and executed by the Germans in the public square at Rivengen in Copenhagen. He had written a letter to them from prison the night before he was shot. It had said simply that he loved them and that he was not afraid and that he was proud to have done what he could for his country and for the sake of all free people. He had asked in the letter to be buried beside Lise, but even that was not to be for Peter. The Nazis refused to return the bodies of the young men they shot in Rivingen. They simply buried them there where they were killed and marked the graves only with numbers. Later, Anne-Marie had gone to the place with her parents and they had laid flowers there on the bleak numbered ground. That night, Anne-Marie's parents told her the truth about Lise's death at the beginning of the war. She was part of the resistance too, Papa had explained, part of the group that had fought for our country in whatever ways they could. We didn't know, Mama added. She didn't tell us. Peter told us after she had died. Oh, Papa, Anne-Marie cried. Mama, they didn't shoot least, did they? The way that they did Peter in the public square with the people watching? She wanted to know, she wanted to know it all, but she wasn't certain she could bear the knowledge. But Papa shook, her, shook his head. She was with Peter, Peter and others in a cellar where they held secret meetings to make plans. Somehow the Nazis found out and they raided the place that evening. They all ran in different ways trying to escape. Some of them were shot, Mama told her sadly. Peter was shot in the arm. Do you remember that Peter's arm was bandaged in a sling at Lisa's funeral? He wore a coat over it so that no one would notice and a hat to hide his red hair. The Nazis were looking for him. Anne-Marie didn't remember. She hadn't noticed. The whole day had been a blur of grief. But what about Lise? She asked. If she wasn't shot, what happened? From the military car, they saw her running and they simply ran her down. So it was true what you said that she was hit by a car. It was true, Papa told her. They were all so young, Mama said, shaking her head. She blinked, closed her eyes for a moment, and took a long, deep breath. So very, very young, with so much hope. Now remembering Lise, Anne-Marie looked from the balcony down the street. She saw that below, amid the music singing and the songs of church bells, people were dancing. It brought back another memory, the memory of Lise so long ago, wearing the yellow dress, dancing with Peter on the night that they announced their engagement. She turned and went to her bedroom where the blue trunk still stood in the corner, as it had always had these years. Opening it, Anne-Marie saw the yellow dress that had begun to fade. It was discolored at the edges where it had lain so long in the folds. Carefully, she spread open the skirt of the dress and found a place where Ellen's necklace hid, hid, lay hidden in the pocket. The little star of David still gleamed gold. Papa, she said, returning to the balcony where her father was standing with the others, watching the crowds rejoice. She opened her hand and showed him the necklace. Can you fix this? I have kept it this long. It was Ellen's. Her father took it from her hand and examined the broken clasp. Yes, he said, I can fix it. When the Rosens come home, you can give it back to Ellen. Until then, Anne-Marie told him, I will wear it myself. I hope you enjoyed the story of Number of the Stars. Um, it is a fictional book based off of real events. So this isn't an actual event that happened um, or an actual story that actually happened, but it is made up based on the events of that time. Um, make sure you make a reply video to this story.